April 8, 2005. Shortly before the start of the solemn funeral mass for John Paul II, his body was placed inside a coffin made of cypress wood. His face was covered by Monsignor Stanislaw Zivic, his personal secretary, and by Bishop Piero Marini, the pontifical master of ceremonies, while a brief prayer was read. May his face, now hidden from our sight, contemplate your beauty, Lord. Then a Latin text was read outlining his life and pontificate. The pontificate of John Paul II was one of the longest in the history of the church. Many changes of various kinds were experienced during that time. They included the fall of several communist regimes, events to which he himself contributed. He undertook many trips to various nations in order to announce the gospel. His love for young people led him to create the World Youth Days, bringing together millions of young people from all over the world. He successfully promoted dialogue with Jews and with representatives of other religions, occasionally calling them to come together especially in Assisi, to pray for peace. The document was signed by those present, enclosed in a metal tube and placed inside the coffin. On the day of the funeral, the open space in front of St. Peter's looked like a meeting of the United Nations. The most powerful men and women in the world were there, as well as representatives of different religions, while delegates from all the Christian churches stood around the coffin. An open Bible had been placed on the coffin. The wind blew the pages back and forth before a powerful gust closed the book altogether. The red vestments of the concelebrating cardinals billowed and flapped in the wind. It was as though the Holy Spirit, who'd given the church John Paul II in the first place, now blew on those called to elect his successor. Presidents and former presidents of the United States of America found themselves beside leaders from Muslim countries. Men and women of different and often conflicting faiths sat in silence before the coffin of John Paul II and listened to the voice of the wind. It was a minor miracle that would have appealed to Karol Wojtyla. Over 300,000 people packed the square while hundreds of millions more watched and listened on radios, television and internet. The funeral mass was celebrated by 160 cardinals and was presided over by the dean of the sacred college, Joseph Ratzinger. A great silence fell over St. Peter's Square when Cardinal Ratzinger read his homily. <laughs> 